by March 2014, Subin has stolen military secrets worth an estimated $600 billion in research and development. The F-35 stealth capabilities, the F-22's thrust vectoring system, and the C-17's cargo management software. Technologies that took America 40 years to perfect, now sitting on servers in Beijing. Su has earned $4.7 million for his work, roughly $1.50 per stolen file. He owns three properties in Vancouver, drives a 2013 Mercedes S-Class, and maintains accounts in Hong Kong worth $8.3 million. His LinkedIn profile lists him as President Load Tech Industries. His real title should be Architect of the Greatest Military Heist in History. Yet 7,500 meters away, in a basement office at FBI headquarters, Special Agent Justin is staring at an intercepted email with the subject line, C-17 Project Reconnaissance Summary. Who intercepted these communications and how did they trace them back to a cable harness manufacturer in Canada? August 8, 2012. FBI Los Angeles Division Special Agent Justin opens a package marked Eyes Only from the National Security Agency. Inside, there are printed emails between three individuals discussing Project C-17 and Big Bird, Boeing's internal codename for the Globemaster. The NSA intercepted these communications using PISM collection against Chinese military servers. One email contains an attachment, a 16-page report detailing exactly how hackers penetrated Boeing's Long Beach facility. The report lists stolen files by name, includes screenshots of Boeing's internal directories, and celebrates successfully obtaining 630,000 files for the motherland. Velazzi reads one line three times. Project manager Stephen Su provided target list and translation services. Stephen Su. Now he has a name. Finding Su Bin takes four months. The hackers use 13 different email addresses across six providers. They communicate through draft folders, never sending messages, a technique that avoids most surveillance. But they make one mistake. On January 14, 2013, someone logs into the account sbank at gmail.com from IP address 67.193.44.22, registered to TELUS Communications in Richmond, British Columbia. That IP traces to a residential address, 8571 Von Boak Road, and the property owner is Sue Bin. The FBI cross-references Sue with aviation industry databases. He attended the 2009 Paris Air Show, the 2010 Boeing Suppliers Conference, the 2011 Defense Manufacturing Summit. Each event coincides with new cyber intrusions at attendee companies. Velazzi builds a timeline. March 2009. Sue meets Boeing engineer at Vancouver Trade Show. April 2009. That engineer's credentials used to access classified servers. October 2010. Sue attends Lockheed Supplier Event in Dallas. November 2010. Dallas-based subcontractor breached using conference attendee list. The pattern repeats 17 times. Sue isn't just identifying targets. He's providing hackers with detailed intelligence about each victim. Employee names, email formats, security protocols, even vacation schedules extracted from casual conversation. One email from UC2 thanks Sue for noting that Target's IT department is minimal during Thanksgiving week. The FBI's investigation expands across three agencies. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations calculates the military impact. China's Y-20 transport plane, revealed in 2013, incorporates 17 specific design elements from the stolen C-17 files. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service finds that China's J-31 fighter prototype uses the exact same radar-absorbent material formula stolen from Lockheed. The Defense Intelligence Agency estimates the thefts accelerated Chinese military aviation by 10 to 15 years, saving Beijing $100 billion in research costs. But prosecuting Su presents a unique challenge. He's a Canadian citizen living in Vancouver. China won't acknowledge the operation exists. The hackers, UC2 and UC3, are People's Liberation Army officers with diplomatic immunity. Traditional extradition could take years. The Justice Department needs leverage. On May 19, 2014, Attorney General Eric Holder announces the indictment of five Chinese military hackers for economic espionage, the first-ever criminal charges against foreign military officers. 
The indictment sends a message to Beijing. America is done tolerating cyber theft. Behind the scenes, prosecutor Adam Hickey prepares a sealed indictment against Sue. Unlike his military partners, Sue has no immunity. He travels frequently, he owns property in California, so he's vulnerable. June 27, 2014. Su Bin books a flight from Vancouver to China, departing June 29. The FBI has 48 hours. Velazzi calls the Royal Canadian Mounted Police at 4 p.m. By 6 p.m., Canadian prosecutors have an arrest warrant. By 1 p.m., surveillance teams confirm Su is home at 8571 Bombok Road. They'll move at dawn. The operation involves 31 officers across multiple agencies. RNCP tactical teams, FBI liaison, Canadian Security Intelligence Service observers, they expect Sue might attempt to destroy evidence, standard protocol for intelligence assets. Two officers are assigned solely to secure electronics. They must prevent Sue from triggering any kill switches that could wipe his drives. At 5.43 a.m. on June 28, teams take positions around Sue's house. At 5.47 a.m., Sue opens his front door. In his hand, there is a cup of coffee and his Samsung Galaxy phone. An officer immediately separates him from the device. Good thing Sue had an encrypted messaging app open, his thumb hovering over a button labeled Emergency Clean. Inside Sue's home office, investigators find three laptops, eight external drives, and 47 USB sticks hidden inside a fake electrical outlet. The primary laptop contains 892 gigabytes of stolen military data organized in folders with Chinese labels. One folder alone, F-35 Electromagnetic Properties, contains information classified beyond top secret. If leaked publicly, these files would compromise the entire F-35 fleet survivability. Su has backups of everything, on drives scattered across three continents. Even now, arrested and facing extradition, he assumes Beijing will negotiate his release. He's about to learn that China protects its assets differently. Within five days of Su's arrest, two Canadians living in China will vanish into detention. Their crime being Canadian at the wrong time. Who were Kevin and Julia Garrett, and why did China choose them? July 4, 2014. Dandong, China, near the North Korean border. Kevin and Julia Garrett finish dinner at the Shangri-La Hotel. For 30 years, they've run Peter's Coffee House, teaching English and helping North Korean refugees. They're discussing plans for their son's wedding when eight state security agents surround their table. Without explanation or charges, the Garretts are separated, hooded, and driven to different facilities. Kevin won't see daylight for 23 months. Julia will be interrogated for 200 consecutive days. Their arrest occurs exactly six days after Su Bin's capture, precision timing that Western intelligence immediately recognizes as retaliation. China's message is unambiguous. Touch our assets, we take yours. The foreign ministry denies any connection between the cases, but Chinese state media tells a different story. The Global Times publishes an editorial on July 8 titled The Patriot Su Bin. It reads, if Su has stolen these secrets for China, we are willing to show our gratitude and respect for his service to our country on this secret battlefield without gunpowder. We face endless Western aggression. Special agents who gather intelligence deserve hero status. The article receives 3.7 million views and 400,000 supportive comments on Weibo. One comment with 50,000 likes, Su Bin did more for China than a thousand soldiers. Behind closed doors, Chinese diplomats make their position clear to Canadian officials. Vice Foreign Minister Liu Jianmin tells Canadian Ambassador that certain bilateral irritants could be resolved if Canada shows flexibility on Su Bin's case. The translation, release Su or the Garrett stay imprisoned. Canada faces an impossible choice. Honor their extradition treaty with America and sacrifice two innocent citizens, or cave to hostage diplomacy and destroy their credibility. Prime Minister Stephen Harper chooses a third option, stall for 18 months. Su Bin's case crawls through Canadian courts. His lawyers file 17 different motions challenging extradition. Meanwhile, Kevin Garrett loses 40 pounds in detention. He's kept in a cell with lights that never turn off, subjected to daily interrogations about stealing state secrets. The secrets Chinese investigators claim? The Garrett's photographed military installations. The evidence? Tourist photos with buildings visible in the background. 
Julia develops hypertension from stress requiring medication that Chinese authorities randomly withhold. Their son files 200 appeals, all rejected, without explanation. Su Bin watches this unfold from his minimum security detention in Vancouver. He receives Chinese newspapers, encrypted letters from Beijing, even visits from Chinese consular officials who assure him he'll be home soon. But by December 2015, something shifts. The Canadian courts reject his final appeal. The Americans offer a plea deal, admit guilt, serve 46 months, and avoid trial. If he fights and loses, he faces 60 years. Subin's handlers in Beijing go silent. There are no more visits, no more letters. The message is clear. He's been burned. On February 23, 2016, Su Bin makes a decision that shocks Beijing. He waives extradition and agrees to face American justice within 72 hours. He's on a plane to Los Angeles. On March 23, standing before Judge Christina Snyder, Su Bin pleads guilty to conspiracy to hack American defense contractors. He admits to identifying targets, directing hackers, and translating stolen documents. His confession provides the FBI with their first complete picture of Chinese military intelligence cyber operations. Names, methods, targets, everything Beijing never wanted exposed. The plea agreement reveals staggering details. Su Bin confirms stealing files from 37 different companies. He identifies 14 specific technologies transferred to China's aviation industry. He admits to earning $4.7 million over six years, paid through shell companies in Hong Kong and Macau. Most damaging, he confirms the stolen data directly influenced China's J-20, J-31, and Y-20 programs. These aren't allegations anymore. They're confessions from China's own spy. The intelligence community will study Su's testimony for years, using it to patch vulnerabilities and identify other potential assets. Judge Snyder sentences Subin to 46 months in federal prison, less than four years for stealing $600 million in military secrets. The light sentence reflects his cooperation and America's desire to send a message. Defect and we'll protect you. Even your enemies respect a professional. Sue serves his time at Terminal Island Federal Correctional Institution, a minimum security facility known for housing white-collar criminals. He teaches Mandarin to inmates, maintains a vegetable garden, and writes a 400-page memoir that the CIA classifies immediately upon completion. September 15, 2016 Two weeks after Subin enters federal prison, China releases Kevin and Julia Garrett. Kevin has been held for 775 days, Julia for 186. They're deported to Canada with no explanation their coffee house seized, their life's work destroyed. The prisoner swap, nobody acknowledges, is complete. Su's betrayal cost Beijing two years of hostage leverage. For nothing. The Garretts return to Canada, traumatized but alive. They'll spend years in therapy recovering from their ordeal as pawns in a game they never chose to play. The Su Bin affair fundamentally changes cyber espionage. In September 2015, President Obama presents President Xi with evidence from Su Bin's case. Stolen files with Chinese military signatures confirmed by China's own spy. Xi can't deny it. The two leaders announce an unprecedented agreement. No more cyber theft for commercial advantage. Private security firms report Chinese intrusions dropped 90% over the next year. The agreement holds for exactly 18 months before slowly unraveling. By 2017, new Chinese hacking groups emerge with different names but familiar methods. March 3, 2020, Su Bin completes his sentence and boards China Eastern Flight 582 to Beijing. No media covers his return. No hero's welcome awaits. Chinese intelligence considers him compromised, an asset who talked. He disappears into suburban Shanghai, his $8.3 million frozen, his reputation in ruins. The technologies he stole, however, live on. China's J-20 enters mass production in 2021. The Y-20 becomes the backbone of Chinese military logistics. The electromagnetic signatures Su provided help China develop counterstars that can reportedly detect F-35s at 350 kilometers. 
America responds by accelerating sixth-generation fighter development, embedding counterintelligence teams at every contractor, and implementing zero-trust networks that assume every user is potentially compromised. The damage is already done. China compressed 20 years of aviation development into five. They learn not just what America built, but how America thinks. Every specification Su stole contained decades of trial and error, failed experiments, and hard-won knowledge. You can't unseal that intelligence. Today, Subin's case remains the only successful prosecution of a Chinese military spy for stealing fighter jet secrets. UC-2 and UC-3 were never identified. Dozens of similar operations likely continue undetected. The FBI estimates Chinese cyber theft costs America $300 million annually. The Pentagon assigns 300 full-time staff just to investigate aerospace breaches. Every major defense contractor now employs former NSA officers to hunt intruders. The spy war Su Bin epitomized isn't over. It's evolved. If you want to understand how modern espionage threatens global security, watch our previous investigation about Edward Snowden, the man who outsmarted the NSA. Because Subin wasn't the first, and he definitely wasn't the last.